Hey there everybody at Mission Control. This is The Real Martian. Today I wanted to respond to uh, some questions I had, actually more like requests, to give uh, a system overview. So take a few minutes here. I'm not going to go in depth at all into any of the systems. I uh, just want to keep the video short. As you guys know, uh, I'm having quite a few computer problems here on Mars. Uh, just a whole computer and it takes a long time to put up these really short videos. So. I'm going to keep it short to the point. Here we go. First, uh, walking in the building. So here's outside the building. And then we walk inside the building. And once you get inside the building, to the left here, just a general work area. We intend to put a, a processing sink, you know, like a three-spot uh, processing stainless steel sink here. Um, the water will uh, come from the well that we have and then the uh, runoff water will actually go into the digester uh, at just kind of like a garbage disposal. So we haven't done that yet. That'll be in probably phase three, maybe, maybe in phase two, the one we're in right now, but we'll see. So I'm gonna step back in the corner here, turn you around. I'm gonna pan just left to right. There we go. Kind of see how big the building is. That's all snow outside. The building is 80 feet long by 40 feet wide by 22 feet tall. It's a PVC covering with galvanized steel structure. This is lane one. It has not been built yet. Uh, in underneath each lane is actually part of the heating system. It's a radiant heating system, so we pump warm water underneath all the grow lanes that keeps the water warm, right about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we have lane number two. Kind of looks like it's something that you'd see on Mars. The reason it's covered with plastic right now is to help with heating. It keeps the heat in. So we don't have to spend as much money on making energy. There's lane three. And all the way over here is lane four. Now, turning around, this whole unit here, all of these little big round circles, this is the digester unit. Over in the corner, that's the actual digester. That goes 12 feet down in the ground. I've, I'll be talking about that in detail later. Right next to it, the green, that's its outlet where effluent comes out. Uh, digestate, I should say. That's the uh, digested liquid. It's really great fertilizer. Check out the folks at Solar Cities. Um, I think it's Solar C3 Itties. Uh, they use these digesters, uh, they help put them in across the planet. That uh, fertilizer, the digestate that comes out, is really awesome. So uh, this is the digestate storage tank. And then those two tanks over there are methane storage tanks. So the digester actually produces methane and we can use that to heat and to uh, run electricity in the building. However, I have the digester system turned off right now because we have a feeding problem. It's a very hungry dragon and uh, I can't get enough food into it in the middle of winter right now. So that's going to be a springtime project and we'll talk about that a lot on this channel because that's going to be a hard problem to solve and I think probably many, many of you will actually enjoy uh, helping us solve that problem. All this right here is the heating and methane management system where we clean the methane and remove humidity from it and heat it or uh, burn it in a hot water tank heater and then we have our valve system that valve system is responsible for taking heat and moving it throughout uh, the, the grow beds underneath all the fish tanks like I showed you earlier. Our power input we have a generator backup system in place we have a maximum of 40 amps of US power. Uh, so that is not a lot and it forces us to find ways to be efficient. So we have to run all of this with 40 amps. That's it. That was a physical limitation of our site. Uh, it would cost a lot of money to bring a lot more power here. And we don't want that. We actually want to solve the problem of power. So uh, we kind of forced ourselves into the fire, you might say. That's the biogas generator, so it actually run directly off the gas produced by the methane. It's pretty cool. I've had it up and running a few times, it's awesome. This is fish food. 
We're going to talk a lot about the fish. They're inside of these grow lanes. I'll go in there and show you those. All that orange stuff down there, that's the ventilation system. Uh, I shouldn't say ventilation. What I should really say is air handling system. What we're doing is we're sucking the air, the humid, really, really moist air. See all that humidity there? We're sucking all of that, putting it through a dehumidifier, and then moving it down into our heating system, which is down in the ground. You have your chimney going up and out. That chimney's inside because we were losing a lot of heat out to the outer environment uh, just because the heat was in the chimney. And I was like, well, that's kind of stupid. I need more heat in the building. Why don't I move the chimney inside? So we did, and that created its own problems. Now we have a condensation problem inside of the, uh, inside of the chimney that we'll have to work on. So, you know, it's like whack-a-mole, if you've ever seen that game. You uh, whack one mole, and then another one pops up. So uh, now I'm going inside of the grow lanes. This is lane number two. It is nowhere near complete. You see this, uh, all these things on the bottom here. Uh, these are all the grow beds filled with lava rock. And uh, we'll be growing plants in there. We're gonna be changing this lane to a microgreen lane. But you can actually see stuff growing right now in the lanes. Uh, Lots of kale and broccoli and lettuce, uh, some spices, but uh, here we go. Hey there, little guy. Things are actually doing pretty good. Uh, here's our kale bed. So sadly, we're gonna be ripping this all up, uh, considered a lesson learned, and uh, we're gonna be making this all microgreens. And actually, let's see if I can't get a big shot. So you see how there's the, the one, one row right here. Well, there's gonna be five rows total that go up. We have a lot of building to do still, folks. You're gonna have some fun watching us here at the Real Martian. Let's talk about water and uh, automation real quick. So I'm gonna start with automation because it's convenient. Above each grow lane is one of these units. Now it looks like it's just a power box, but if you look closely, you can see there's been some modifications done already. Each one of those boxes contains an Arduino control unit that I programmed, wrote my own code for it, and it is responsible for um, controlling the lights and the motors. You can see here the rail system that the lights move on and the light hangs off of it. We do that because each of these lights are very expensive. Uh, they're about $200 a piece, and these are the cheap ones, folks. Uh, and then power. Uh, each one of these grow beds should actually have four lights over the top of it and we just can't afford that. That's just not an option. We can't afford it with power and we can't afford it with uh, money. So the solution that others have used before us is the rail system and that moves a single light across the area and that brings you all the light that you need. So uh, that's what we're using right now. We'll see how it all works. Um, I was talking about these control units, so there's another control unit there. And then you can see there's this white cable going over here, all the way around. And that comes down and attaches into that guy right there. That's a water control valve. Each one of the beds is on a timer, so it knows how, what the flow rate is uh, of the water coming in from the pump system. And then it, uh, it figures out how long the water should be running in order to fill these beds. Uh, that pump system is right here. It's a pool pump, folks. It works pretty darn good. And that sucks the water out of the fish pond. And all the way, uh, it actually creates a jet on the other side to create a current for the fish so it's not stagnant water. And then it pumps up through that PEX piping. And that PEX piping goes all the way down into T's. Manual valves as backups, automatic valves as primary, <clears throat> so and that delivers the water to the system. Now, a lot of people have questions about aquaponics, and I'm going to spend a lot of time on it, but let's do the short version. Fish poop, bacteria eat the fish poop, they poop, plants eat the bacteria poop, and then worms poop some more, and then that all gets eaten by the plants some more, 
and the plants eat all that poop and clean the water and we return the water without poop in it back to the fish. It's a great system. Again, I made light of it here today, but I will go into it in depth. It deserves a lot of attention. Uh, so I just want to get this put up for all of you asking for the overview video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. <clears throat> we do need some help out there. I hate to do it, so a, a shameful plug though, but you know, yesterday I did videos and it took me all day uh, to get one uh, eight minute video up onto the web. I'm just, uh, I was less prepared than I thought. So I want to keep doing these, this is fun. I see a lot of great comments out there and I am so thankful for your uh, inputs. A lot of you guys have great ideas. Some things, honestly, we've already thought of and I try to respond to you guys in the comments about that. Um, but a lot of original ideas that really are thought provoking. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. It, it really makes me feel, and I'm sincere about this, if we all come together and help each other out in constructive ways, there is literally nothing we can't accomplish together. So. Uh, there's that hashtag that I've been starting to use, uh, hashtag let's go to Mars. Um, maybe you want to be part of that. I know Mars is funny uh, and I'm kind of doing the space theme, uh, but really, you know what, this system, if you haven't caught on yet, uh, let me just tell you, this system is actually designed for Earth and I'm just having fun with the Mars thing um, because I wanted to be an astronaut and I still do. It's just a dream of mine. Um, but really, this stuff, uh, it's going to help solve problems here. I'm going to talk about that in some videos coming up about why, uh, why it's important that we solve these problems here on Earth. And there's a time crunch, folks. The year 2050, there's going to be a lot more people on this planet, and we're going to have to have 75% more agricultural production than what we have right now today. And the best we can do, the best we can do, folks, is 33%. We need it to go up by 75% but the best we can do is 33. That means a lot of people are in trouble, folks. We've got to figure out ways to do things a lot more efficiently. And when I say 33%, that's extreme agriculture, that's lots of automation, that's huge fields, that's GMOs, that's hybrids, that's a whole bunch of things that many of you don't like and feel very uncomfortable with. This system is specifically designed to help with that. That is why we're doing this to help people here on Earth. And if we do it, if we think about it like on Mars, like if this was on Mars, it will be the most energy efficient thing. It won't use fossil fuels. It won't use lots of electricity so that you need more dams. Uh, it will be very efficient. And if we can figure this out together, we will change the world. I hope you enjoyed the overview. We do need help uh, as I was starting off with, sorry, I got on a tangent there. Uh, I need a new computer, folks. Uh, I'm looking at a Dell Gateway Alienware. It's 2400 bucks. If each of you went uh, and donated a dollar right now today on our GoFundMe, we'd be able to get that, and I could produce videos in a fraction of the time. I'd like to get where I can do a video a day uh, for all of you. There's so much that we'd like to share. I think you're going to enjoy it. So if you can help out on our GoFundMe or on our Patreon site, we'd really appreciate it. But again, if each of you just went and did a buck, it would really be helpful. And instead of spending all day creating a nine minute video, I could do it in just a few hours. So uh, thanks, thanks again for following us. Sorry for the shameful plug, but I really do need help. Uh, this is The Real Martian. See you next time.